Courageous Doctors, is a newscast about healthcare topics of concern to everyone. From health and safety tips, to recall notices and medical news. Here's your host, Dr. Barry Prystowski. Hello again, this is Barry Prasowski um, for another special update on the coronavirus. Uh, we'll go through that first. It's been a while. And uh, then we'll get to our usual broadcast of Courageous Doctors, which, of course, is the show that's for you and your doctor. And we'll cover, after the coronavirus updates, uh, we'll look at Obamacare and we'll look at other health care news and health and safety tips. So let's begin. Well, in general, let me just sum this up by saying that uh, Jersey has turned the corner after very high rates of 4,000 or so hospital admissions a day um, and uh, very high uh, amounts of people on respirators, 1,500, 1,600. Uh, after April and May, as we come into June, it's, it's now we've turned the corner and we've begun opening up our state. Uh, we do have a total of almost 15,000 deaths, and at least half of those were in nursing homes and the elderly. But uh, uh, I've had a number of friends and known a, a patients and other people that have died, parents of my kids. I'm a pediatrician, um, you know, who were younger that died. So it's really been rough, and I know it's not over yet. Um, but uh, we are uh, much less than that. We're seeing about two to 300 hospital admissions and maybe 100 people on ventilators, so it's certainly come down. But we can't let our guard down because uh, Jersey and New York were, of course, the hardest hit, but other states that have opened up without people being careful, you know, uh, distancing themselves and wearing masks, their numbers are very high. I think California, Texas, Arizona, Florida, they're up to where we were last month in Jersey with over 4,000 uh, new cases each day. So we really have to be careful. But uh, let's look at this a little more uh, in depth and try to see what's going on. Uh, this, the illness uh, not only put us at uh, uh, terrible uh, disease and problems and shut down our economy, uh, it's also caused the shortage of a number of my patients that have other needs. Uh, there's a shortage of asthma meds, sedatives for people in the operating room, antibiotics, uh, although I can get most of the ones I need, the ones in the hospital are a shortage, uh, other antivirals, and, of course, supplies for kidney dialysis because, as you know, a number of these patients um, have kidney failure and those supplies are going down. Um, let's see what other uh, important numbers come out of here. One thing we're noticing is that although children are not uh, getting as sick, um, the new multi-inflammatory disease, which is similar to a vasculitis or what we see in young babies, a Kawasaki's, 
Uh, we've had about 50 cases in Jersey. New York had closer to 200. It's not common, but I, I'm watching out for this closely. So any of my patients that present with signs of blood clots and vasculitis, such as crusty red lips, crusty tongue, uh, deep red injected eyes, very sick looking, red uh, uh, blood clots on the fingertips and, and bruising on the skin. I'm getting them right into the hospital if that happens. At this point, I've just been testing their blood for signs of inflammation that might lead to that. And fortunately, I haven't seen it, but I have had a number of children that were sick, you know, where they're in the household with sick uh, parents, but uh, they fortunately haven't gotten too short of breath or as sick as the parents, and I haven't seen the vasculitis. These blood clots are, of course, a lot more common in adults, and that's one of the main reasons that leads to the, their death and complications. In the adults, we see lung failure, kidney failure. We see heart failure. In, in the children that have this with the blood clots, uh, which, again, is rare, uh, we can get heart, we can get coronary artery disease and heart failure and myocarditis, too. Okay, uh, one of the things that's been very disturbing in adults is they don't always show up with signs of being out of breath, although they're a little short of breath. Most of them that go in the hospital are short of breath and require oxygen, but some of them, even though their oxygen levels are dangerously low, they don't show it right away. And, of course, that's uh, that can get them into trouble fast. So uh, there, there's a lot of still really scary stuff out there. Um, let's see. The, um, the other thing that's of concern uh, is that we really don't know what to do with these antibodies. There's been a number of studies that have shown, and of course we're trying to make vaccines to get our antibody levels up, and those might be ready by next year. But what we're seeing with patients that are infected is some have very good antibody levels, and we're using their blood to uh, take the plasma and inject it into very critically ill uh, patients in the intensive care units to try to fight off the disease using their own protection that they've built after they got over their illness. But there's other people either that had no symptoms or mild symptoms that initially had antibodies, and those are going away. And um, the reason why that's important is because when you vaccinate somebody, again, they don't have the disease. You're trying to force their body to make antibodies. And if the antibodies aren't going to last long, we're going to be in trouble with the vaccine. But this is what they're studying. People have been injected with the vaccine for a number of months now, and every month they're checking their blood. And once they think they have a good antibody level, then, of course, they'll release the vaccine to the rest of us. So this is something we have to watch very, very closely. We know the virus re remains in the body for a long time. Uh, the uh, British Medical Journal um, – did a, uh, reported a study where it can stay in the stool for as much as three weeks. It can be in the saliva, stay in the blood, and even in the, in the semen, even though we there's no proof of sexual spread, um, it can stay in the semen, so we'll have to see what that means. I know in the hospital, when we have mommies born uh, who have the disease with babies, we're worried about uh, breastfeeding, but we don't think it's spread through the breast milk, so we're um, if they have to breastfeed, we're, we're allowing them to. Um, let's see. Well, uh, one of the things is, as you know, the nasopharyngeal test is extremely painful. So now they're allowing us to do tests where we can get mucus from the front of the nose or even saliva, and Rutgers has helped with that as well, and that uh, it's a lot less painful. And, of course, when you test, you're looking for the PCR, the DNA to show that you have the disease. That's different than doing the blood test for antibodies to show that you've had the disease in the past and now maybe hopefully made some immunity to it. Well, what are we doing in terms of uh, vaccines and drugs? Well, we know that remdesivir, which uh, inhibits the uh, virus from working in the cell, uh, it seems to be working along in combination with anti-inflammatories. As you know, one of the big problems with this coronavirus is it, it, because it takes such a long time to simmer in the body and the body has no defense against it, it mounts an incredibly difficult um, inflammatory reaction and it, it hooks into the blood vessels. That's where it attaches to. 
and the, and wherever those blood vessels go, like shutting down the lung, uh, brain strokes, kidney heart attacks, um, shutting down kidneys, liver, um, what happens is it's the inflammatory response uh, causing the clots, trying to fight the virus. And so we're giving anti-inflammatories, not too many anti-inflammatories to stop us from fighting it, but enough to hopefully stop these blood clots and the devastating death that goes with this disease. Uh, some of the ways they're, some of the drugs they're working on are working on the attachment at the level of the virus so it can't leave the virus, similar to Tamiflu, and others are working within the cell. And the vaccines, a number of those companies are in Jersey, uh, have already started uh, studies, as we said before. And so uh, companies like Sanofi, Galaxo, AstraZeneca, Moderna, and companies like that. Uh, Moderna has an interesting vaccine. It's called a, a message RNA vaccine, where it actually, normally vaccines present the um, harmless part of the virus, to for, force our antibodies to uh, to form, uh, to fight it. That's how vaccines generally work. This one actually injects genetic material to try to help us make the, uh, uh, make the antibodies. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so, again, the, you know, we should wear the mask. It really helps. Uh, N95, uh, which I use in the office, is a little more protective than just facial coverings or surgical masks, but whatever you have really helps. Uh, we're still looking to see if ultraviolet light helps. A few things to say about uh, uh, antiseptics and washing our hands. Soap and water works really well. Uh, we'll talk later on health and safety, but uh, there there is some companies that put out uh, sanitizers instead of having regular alcohol, it had methyl alcohol, which can go through the skin and cause uh, uh, poisoning. So uh, we'll talk about that later. Let's see. Uh, okay, so uh, that's a quick overview of Corona. Don't go away. There's more courageous doctors after these messages. Hi, I'm Ingrid Burke. And I'm Gina Unger. Gina has known Dr. Barry in a professional and personal capacity for many years, and we're thrilled to be in his building. We are psychotherapists, and we offer mental health counseling for ages 12 and up. We do individual, couples, and family counseling. We're also excited to say that we have groups that we have for teenage boys and girls for social skills, anger management, and self-esteem building. If you need to reach us, check us out at lifeworksnj.com. Our phone numbers are also listed on that website if you'd like to contact us. Thank you. Thank you. The Waxed In is a full-body unisex studio. We specialize in hard wax, which is gentler on the skin. We do all types of waxing from head to toe. You can come in with your friends so you have the, the moral support. We have hors d'oeuvres. You do have to have a minimum of eight people for that party and you would schedule that. Everybody's looking for a hand to hold and then someone to share the experience with so you can look that up on our website. We have prenatal waxing. So we take a little bit more time with the new moms and uh, a lot of people will schedule that once they hit their second trimester. We do have a waxing membership. It's set up just like a gym membership, and you come in just like you would go to the gym. It comes out automatically, and you just show up for your wax. We have several memberships for different services. We also have wax packages. The phone number is 973-542-8442. The website is www.thewaxden.com. We have 24-hour online booking. Come to the Wax Den. We wax it all. Courageous Doctors continues with Dr. Barry Price Toski. Let's see what's going on with the rest of healthcare. Let's go to Obamacare first. Um, as you know, a lot's going on. Trump uh, is still trying to defeat it in the Supreme Court, and I don't know if that'll happen before or after the election. But uh, in the meantime, other things happening with the government. We know that the states have cut Medicaid benefits during this pandemic. The states have really had a lot of trouble with money. And, uh, of course, 60% of the money comes from the federal government. But uh, most states, including Jersey, the Medicaid makes up 20% of our state budget. So, again, remember I said in the beginning the disease has a lot of consequences, not only in causing illness and hurting the economy, but it's affected the care of a number of my patients because I have a very large Medicaid practice. 
and you really want these benefits and all their chronic illnesses to be taken care of. So you can see there's a lot of side effects to this disease. Um, one thing Trump did, uh, which was really great, was he decreased the price of insulin, uh, starting with Medicare patients, but it'll, it'll go, the companies had promised that they'll do it for everybody else. We had a big problem. A, a number of patients can afford their insulin or insulin paraphernalia, with needles and glucose testing, and it was very, very expensive. But now, uh, uh, for it, starting with patients on Medicare, it'll be $35 a month or lower to do their insulin. And so I was really, really happy with that. Let's see. Um, another thing. Um, Uh, we were uh, talking about the problem. JAMA did an article, Journal of American Medical Association. They're trying to figure out why drug prices in general are high, and we think it relates to benefit managers. Uh, let me review for you what those are. Insurance companies don't uh, just pay for drugs to drug companies. They have an in-between benefit managers. There's a few large ones that buy all the drugs in the country for the insurance companies. The problem is they give kickbacks to the insurance company, but they raise the price of the drugs because they want kickbacks for themselves too. And if you walk into the pharmacy and, like me, you have deductibles and things, you may end up paying the full higher sticker price, and that's been one of the problems. I don't know what to do about that, but Trump's working on it. Let's see. The Supreme Court, uh, this is uh, going away from um, – medicine, but going towards something just as important, they stopped a sewage plant in Hawaii from dumping uh, sewage underground that went to rivers and oceans, and this was the Supreme Court uh, battle, and of course, um, you know, we get a lot of illnesses that I report come from contaminated water and food, so that was important. Uh, of course, we're still in the state of emergency, though we're opening up. Child care day centers have already opened up. And, uh, sports camps and things to follow and we're opening up the rest of our economy. Let's see. The, um, NPR, um, talked about President Trump ending his relationship with the World Health Organization due to its cover, uh, uh, helping China, uh, not be as transparent initially with the disease. And this is ongoing. You know that China kept it a secret for a long time, uh, back in, uh, the fall. And uh, it delayed us getting ready to, to fight this thing. And, of course, you know, as I said, we have almost 15,000 deaths in Jersey, but there's over 130,000 deaths nationwide, and that's just in our country. I think we're the fourth. Uh, we have, like, one-fourth of all the deaths in the world. So we're, we're kind of pissed that China did that, but I don't know if Trump should have withheld funds to the World Health Organization, you know, I mean, they shouldn't have covered up for China, but, you know, we need them to help fight this epidemic. Let's see, the Star-Ledger says that a federal audit showed that New Jersey failed in areas of securing standards of safety for these long-term care and nursing facilities. Remember, we said that half of the deaths in Jersey were in these homes, and, of course, the state's working very hard to upgrade those standards, and they're testing these patients, and they're really, really trying to make them safe now. They're doing the best they can. Uh, it takes time to reverse standards, especially in the middle of an epidemic. Um, the New Jersey Department of uh, Environment uh, has stricter limits now on drinking water for some of the chemical poisoning, the parafluoro, octanoic acid, you know, the PFOAs, PFOS, PFAS, all that poly polyfluoral crap from plastics and things, the stuff that's found in cookware and firefighting foam, that gets into our water supply and poisons us. So uh, the new limits now are 13 parts per trillion. It won't start till next year. The rule was actually adopted in 2018. Um, and to tell you how bad it is, we're going for 13 parts per trillion, right? Well, uh, some of the dump sites like McGuire and Dick's uh, Army bases have 264,000 parts per trillion. So uh, we're, like, poisoning our army, which is not a good thing. Um, lastly, uh, for government stuff, the Hudson Regional Hospital in Secaucus is going to be purchasing the Hoboken Uni uh, University Medical Center 
and Bayonne Medical Center. I'm still hearing news reports where uh, there may be some argument there as to who buys who, but that's what the Star-Ledger reported. Okay, let's move on uh, briefly to some other healthcare news, try to catch up a little. Reuters reported that the FDA had recalled metformin uh, due to its NDMA, uh, which is uh, a chemical that involves neurotransmitters and can uh, lead to cancer. Um, metformin is our most common drug for metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes. Um, I was actually on it myself for a while. Uh, it, it's uh, a drug safety use in children, so that's very disturbing. I don't think we have another one for children. We have other diabetic drugs for adults, but I really hope to clear that up. I don't know how the NDMA got in there. CNN, uh, let's do some recalls. Uh, e. coli and raw meat, a New Jersey company, uh, Lakeside Refrigerated Services. The EST number, look on your package. If you have numbers 46841, throw that meat out. I believe it goes under the names Value Packed Fresh Ground Beef, Market Side Butcher Organic Grass Fed Ground Beef, and Thomas Farms Grand Fed Ground Beef Patties. I don't know if the recall is still going on, uh, but just check that number again, 46841. That's the meat to throw out. Let's see, New Jersey Department of Health. Oh, yes, uh, we have an increase in congenital syphilis, so they're advising to increase syphilis testing uh, prenatally in moms and at birth. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, one more recall. NBC News, uh, the CDC said bag salads had a parasite cyclospora in it. That's something that I frequently see uh, reported through the summer. Remember, we're in the summer now. Both cryptosporidium in pools and cyclospora in salads. Um, it's a very bad parasite. It's in, the, it's in Midwestern states now, but I'll tell you anyway, the name of the foods are the Aldi Company, the High V, and the Jewel Osco. So you probably don't have any of those, but just to show you. Uh, let's end up quickly with health and safety tips. I'm going to go back to what I first mentioned before. Uh, BGR reported that the FDA says avoid nine toxic sanitizers from methanol poisoning. Um, I don't have the, I didn't write down the list of the nine, but they're all from one company called ESK Biochem SA. It's a Mexican company, ESK Biochem. So please check if you have that bottle of sanitizer, check with your pharmacy or your store to see if it was one recalled. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yes. Well, of course, we're all using sanitizers, so naturally kids are going to get a hold of them. So we're seeing uh, more poisonings in the emergency room with bleach, so please be careful there. Um, CNN did a nice program reminding us that when you're cleaning home, uh, I had to tell my staff this in the office, when you put the alcohol on a surface, leave it on three, or three to five minutes before you wipe it off. And remember, whether you're in my office or whether you're home, Remember to do doorknobs, light switches, countertops, even toilet seats. Remember to close the cover of the toilet when you're flushing, because if you have a sick patient, that will spread through the air. Do shower heads, all surfaces. And um, let's see, uh, if you're using alcohol, it should be at least 70%. Just be careful. It's not methyl alcohol. It's regular alcohol. Um and remember, if you're caring for a sick person at home, make sure you wear gloves, gloves and masks and put it on him also or her um, and wash their clothes and towels separately and put the wipes in a plastic bag before discarding. Let's see. Uh, changing subjects just a little. Star Ledger said that we always do reports on our air quality. New Jersey has some of the worst air in America, according to the American Lung Association, and it's mostly from vehicle impact. Uh, emissions and industry. Um, we're getting better with suit particles, but not with ozone. And ozone is from tail emissions of exhaust. Let's see. National Geographic said that uh, with the epidemic, um, closing of restaurants, hotels, schools. So where did that food go? A lot of that food that was supposed to go 
to the closed restaurants, hotels, and schools. Of course, they're opening up now. Uh, it went to grocery stores, and so you can look for uh, better buys of cut meat, eggs, berries, uh, you know, milk, vegetables, etc. cetera. Um, let's see. Oh, just some uh, – let me end with a few fun things. I always like to end with a few fun things. Uh, well and Good, which is a, a food network, says use quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A. I eat a lot of quinoa. Quinoa is an alternative grain if you're gluten-free, but a lot of people like it. Um, and there's uh, different fun things to do with quinoa. They said you can do – this is kind of fun – spice rubbed roast chicken with quinoa pilaf, falafel balls and zucchini noodles with quinoa, quinoa and chicken with butternut squash, quinoa falafel with salad avocado, and Mexican chicken with quinoa bowl. I'm going to try some of those myself. Let's see, Food Network's always good. They said you can increase the taste to whatever you're doing at home. A lot of us are cooking at home now. You can add pomegranate seeds to tomatoes and eggplant. Um, you can add pomegranate seeds to uh, and parsley stems. You can add parsley stems to soups. Um, you can use golden wax potatoes because golden wax burns less on cooking, and you can store them in a cool water bowl. Let's see if I have one more. Uh, oh, yeah, this is important. I'll, I'll end with this. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, okay, before I mention that, um, I forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, another recall was from Fox Business. It had recalled the children's Robitussin honey cough and chest congestion DM. Robitussin honey cough and chest congestion DM. Um, it, there's nothing wrong with it. They just mislabeled the dosage cups, uh, like Dimetap cold and cough uh, is a, a one I very commonly use, so I'll have to tell my patients, be sure it's not the recalled ones. Uh, they, they, they just mislabeled the correct dosing so you can poison your child with too much of it. So um, it was four-ounce bottles. Those numbers were 02177 and 02178. Just make sure your Robitussin or Dimetap, I'll be sure to tell my moms, too, make sure it has the right right one. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'll end with this, Natural Health Reports, um, the warning on trans fat foods. It's warning you to read the label because even though we the law has uh, regulations that cut out trans fat, uh, if you have less than one half a gram, they, you don't have to put it on the label. So you really have to read the label carefully uh, to make sure there's no trans fat. Remember, trans fats lead to inflammation, diabetes, coronary heart disease. Um, why did they use trans fats? Because they kept the fats more solid at room temperature. And those, of course, were your partially hydrogenated oils. Uh, and they weren't natural. They were man-made. Uh, there are safe trans fats that are found naturally in red meats and dairy, but these are the hydrogenated ones. So just uh, be very careful. For example, they said margarine, um, uh, look for hydrogenated oils, uh, and uh, that's bad. It would be better to use olive oil margarine, which I use because I'm dairy-free, but the olive oil margarine is safe. In other words, just look for hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated they said be careful with donuts, cookies, creamers, crackers, bite-sized candies with creamy fillings, fast foods, frozen pizza. All those can have trans fats. Uh, that's a brief update. Hopefully we'll uh, be more current as time goes on. It's been difficult, but I did want to update you on where we are. Hopefully Jersey will stay low and not surge like the rest of the states. Uh, please, everyone, be safe. It was good talking to you again and uh, try to follow the safe rules of wearing masks and safe distancing. And remember, to be careful uh, with your cleaning products. Um, you all take care, and we'll see you again soon. Courageous doctors, pioneers, and heroes. Executive producers Barry S. Price Toski, MD, and Patrick M. Marucki. Post-production Patrick M. Marucki. Makeup by Lisa McAllister, Salon Jimmy Gerards. Music provided by Videoblocks. Special thanks to American Medical Association and New England Journal of Medicine. Visit us on the internet at CourageousDoctors.com.